Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. Today we're going to be learning about Ethereum smart contracts and we're actually going to build a basic Ethereum smart contract ourselves. Now for this tutorial, we are in my backyard mountain bike skills park. What does that have to do with Ethereum smart contracts? Well, really nothing, but I like to have fun when I'm building code projects. And for me to build an engaging project, I often like to tie them into other hobbies and interests that I have. So for the smart contract we're going to build, we're going to be making a pseudo random number generator, like a dice roll, that's going to help me randomly pick which mountain bike features to practice on. So we're going to talk about how Ethereum smart contracts work, how to actually write some Solidity code, and deploy that code and test it. And at the end, I'm going to use some of the random numbers we generated to practice on my bike park. Because why not? Learning about blockchain should be fun. So first, let's talk about some smart contract basics. What a smart contract actually is, is it's code that's executed by the Ethereum virtual machine. So the Ethereum network, like the Bitcoin network, is a decentralized network with a bunch of nodes working together to validate transactions. And with Ethereum, each node on the network verifies uh, state changes to the Ethereum blockchain by running smart contract functions invoked by transactions. So when somebody creates a transaction that calls a smart contract function, every node on the network executes that code, validates the new state of the blockchain, and propagates that information around, just like on Bitcoin with Bitcoin transactions. So what are some of the properties of smart contracts? Well, first and very important property is that smart contract code is deterministic. Again, because we're operating on a decentralized network where all nodes work together to validate transactions, all the code has to run the exact same on every different node that is validating uh, that function call to the smart contract. As well, state changes in Ethereum are atomic. Anytime a smart contract function is called and executed on a node, the state change is either fully committed, as in the function call completed successfully, or no changes are committed whatsoever. There's never any intermediate states committed to the blockchain during the middle of a function call. So how are smart contracts actually deployed on the network? Well, code written in a high-level language, the most popular being Solidity, is compiled into an intermediate language called EVM bytecode. The code is actually deployed to the Ethereum network by sending a transaction with this code to a special address on the network called the zero address. The contract then lives at a generated contract address that is owned by that contract, not an external party like an externally owned account that you would find in your wallet. So how are these functions then called? There's two different ways that we can talk about actually executing uh, Ethereum smart contract functions. The first is simply calling a function using a local node and a service like web3.js. So functions on a deployed smart contract can be called in a read-only local execute fashion by using the call function. This is done simply to test out a function and get a return value. So this action is only done on a local node. You can use an API like web3.js to call a smart contract function uh, on your local node or using a virtual blockchain like the one provided by the Remix IDE. And again, this can be used to simply test the output of functions to see how a function actually executes and what the return value will be. But of course, one of the most useful functions of the Ethereum blockchain is being actually able to store global state that's propagated around the network. So for transactions that actually want to execute and update the Ethereum blockchain state, 
These functions are called by actually executing a transaction on the Ethereum network. So someone creates a transaction to the smart contract address with some data that specifies a function call using a special encoding called the ABI or application binary interface that talks to the Ethereum virtual machine. And so when this code is executed, the state updates, such as the return value from the function, is actually stored in the new updated blockchain state for Ethereum. But you might be wondering then, if I'm the developer and I want to get this return value from the function I called, how do I get that? Well, for actual transactions that change the Ethereum state, what you have to do is you trigger an event within that function. So front-end code can then listen for this event to get the return value that you desire. And this is done because actually executing smart contract functions on the blockchain uh, rather than locally is an asynchronous operation. When you create a new transaction, that transaction doesn't immediately execute and return. That transaction execution actually has to be included in an Ethereum block, which are processed about every 15 seconds on the network. So your front-end code set can't simply wait around for 15 seconds to get a return value, especially given that there could be a reason that the function doesn't execute properly and commit any state. So instead, we have our front-end code simply asynchronously listen for an event to be triggered by the smart contract. This allows the Ethereum network time to process the transaction and include it in the block without holding up any of your decentralized app's code. So how can we actually roll a dice on the Ethereum network? This is actually kind of an interesting problem compared to traditional programming languages. We can't have truly random numbers in Ethereum smart contract code like we could with C or C++ or Python. And again, this is because of the requirement that code is deterministic on the Ethereum network. When one node runs the smart contract function, all the other nodes have to get the exact same return value, same state change, same outcome as the other nodes. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a pseudo random number generator that's going to be good enough for our little fun purpose by using some transaction data as a seed and a hashing function. So let's actually break down our couple lines of Ethereum smart contract code and this is going to be over two slides here. So if you're a little bit confused looking at the end, don't worry, there's more code coming. So first, we declare uh, which Solidity compiler that we want to use, and we declare that we're going to have a function called ByteParkDice. I've included some thorough comments in this code so that anybody reading this can make sure they understand what's going on with the individual lines. So now we're declaring a smart contract function called roll dice, and this is a public view. It's a view function because this is simply a read-only function that outputs a number for us. It doesn't actually change any state on the Ethereum blockchain. So later on when we go to test this, we'll find that we can call it locally without having to use an event uh, paradigm. And this function returns a uint256, so a 256-bit integer number, called final roll. So first, let's go ahead and seed our pseudo-random number generator. We want these random numbers to be different for every transaction call, hopefully. And so we're going to use some data that um, was going to differ with generally most transaction calls and uh, senders to the transaction, so the callers of the transaction. Uh, and this is going to be different enough that when you call this function a couple different times, you're going to get different dice rolls. So we are using the message.sender, and this is the caller of the smart contract. It's not necessarily the externally owned account that calls uh, this function through a transaction. This could also be a contract that is calling another contract. As well, we're going to get the seed from the block difficulty 
and block timestamp, which is going to differ for every block. Now what we're doing here with this abi.encode pact is we're simply taking um, some inputs that have different data types, as Solidity is a typed language, and just putting them into a bytes format so that we can later put it through our hash function without having to do any further typecasting. So we're actually hashing these values as well. So I'm hashing the sender, hashing the difficulty, and hashing the uh, timestamp. So next, we put all the seed data together and run it through a hash. So we're kind of creating pseudo random numbers here by using this hash function. Because uh, KEKAC256, which is part of the SHA-3 standard, is um, a cryptographically secure hash function, it's pre-image resistant, meaning that we can't generally predict from an input what the output is going to be. And that's desirable for creating the appearance of randomness here. This hash function is also very, very importantly a deterministic function. So for any one input, we always get the same output. And that means any Ethereum node that runs this contract function is going to get the same output uh, for a particular call. So when we make a call and that call has the same sender timestamp data and difficulty for that particular transaction, all nodes on the network that are trying to validate this will get the same returned number. So we're hashing all of the seed data through our SHA-3 function and getting a hash. Now, this hash is a 256-bit integer, which is much wider than the random range we want to return. So what we do then is we take the hash number casted to a integer and we use the modulo operator, modulo 6. What this means is it actually takes the final number and divides it by 6 and returns the remainder. So we get numbers possible 0 through 5 when we do this modulo operation. And that allows us to narrow down our integer uh, to the random range that we want to return. And we simply add plus one at the end because the modulo operator returns from zero to uh, the uh, one less than the modulo number that you're trying to calculate. So for any number modulo six, we have zero to five and we wanna return one through six. So this is just correcting a potential off by one error. And finally, our contract returns the final roll. So what I did is I plugged this code into the online uh, open source remix IDE for Ethereum. And this is simply an online development environment that allows you to compile Solidity code and test it out. So I compiled my code and deployed it simply to the um, test JavaScript virtual machine and ran some function calls. Again, this is not actually executing transactions in this case. Um, I'm simply testing by using a local call because there's no need for our function to uh, update any state on the Ethereum blockchain. So I got some final results. I rolled and got a 2, a 1, and a 4. So this is again a fairly simple example of an Ethereum smart contract. Again, what we did here is we wanted to simulate rolling a dice, and I'm using it for the fun purpose of uh, figuring out some things to practice on my mountain bike. But this is a general function, and you could use it for anything. Uh, perhaps if you really were bored, you could even play Yahtzee with a friend uh, or family member using this dice smart contract. Uh, people have used this idea before to try and implement uh, lotteries and those sort of things on Ethereum. And it's interesting to talk about the coding challenge of doing random numbers in a very non-random deterministic environment. So now that we have our pseudo random number generator Ethereum smart contract, I generated some dice rolls to help me pick mountain bike features in the backyard to practice on.
Again, what does this have to do with Ethereum smart contracts? Well, really nothing. But when you're learning a new coding skill, I encourage everyone to find projects that are interesting and fun to them. I often find that I'm more engaged learning a coding skill when I tie it into another interest or hobby that I have, and I have quite a few. So I decided to take this project, learn how to make my first smart contract, and also have some fun practicing mountain biking in the yard. As always, there's a written tutorial on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this video. And as always, I hope you found this video interesting and informative and you learned something new with me today. Happy coding and happy mountain biking.